All right, I picked the, the uh, demonstration today based on our challenge for next month because this is an interesting way to do a little ornament where it ends up hollow when you're done. Um, you start out with four pieces of identical wood. Get on your table saw and cut them as perfect as you can. I glued these together with just a spot of uh, hot belt on the tops and the bottoms so there's nothing in the middle. And I glued them together, just held them. Um, and the reason I use hot melt is because it's got to come back apart. And uh, like Fred Bivens was saying a couple months ago, it's a great glue if you want it to fail. Yeah, so. Get that in there. Get yourself some fiberglass tape because this is going to really what's going to hold it together here. And I run this around about three times. So there's no glue in the middle at all? No glue in the middle, yeah. Okay, now when you cut these, you can do uh, several different things. Um, I'm going to do a bell shape in here. You can just do an oval. I think that was what Jim did a year ago. You just cut an oval in it, and it w just comes out with a little circle in the middle. Um, I'm going to cut a bell shape in mine, and uh, it also gives me a little reference here. I fold it in half, and I'm going to draw it on there like this. Because this is going to be the inside when I flip this around. After I turn this outside, I'm going to turn all these pieces around. This will be the inside now, and my bell shape will be, will be complete. So you need to draw that on there to give yourself a little bit of a guide. If you've got an inkling that works. Hang on, i got the fat side here. So that's the, the uh, intended shape. We'll see how close we get to that. So, um, I don't know what's going on here. My tool of choice is the uh, spindle gouge. And because it's a, a bell shape, I'm doing like an OG curve down in there. So I like to get my straight edge here with a, my parting tool.
mean, I can kind of see the shape when I'm looking down at it through the top here. I don't know if that shows up on your camera or not. Try to get a good clean cut because I don't like the sand. to go about halfway through this board and I'm not quite there yet I think it can be a little deeper so you don't want to go all the way through the board because that's the inside is what's holding it all together so Okay, I think that's my bell shape there. So you can put this back in here and see how close I came. Well, I'm fairly close. I missed the inside edge there a little bit, but I think it looks like a bell when I look at the shape here. Let me see if I can clean up that little edge right there. get out to the top here you're cutting a lot of air so it helps to do a very very fine cut I got a little chip away here but I don't think that's gonna be too bad I think maybe this edge needs to go just a little straighter in for the top of my bell like it so now I would get in there and do a little bit of sanding I don't think it's going to take much you know the 320 
this is a little tricky here. You got some sharp edges here, so. Okay, now before we break all this apart, I'm going to call this good. At home, I'd probably sand it a little better and get some of these tool marks out of the bottom, but um, right now. The hot mill is in the top pieces up here, right underneath my bands, like one drop on each seam. Nothing in the middle. Yeah, when I cut this apart, you'll see right where my drops were. Um, now's the time to finish this, because once you take it apart and put it back together, this is going to be inside. Um, so finish it now before it all, uh, before it comes apart here. For finishing spindle work, things like that, small things like this, I use uh, Captain Eddie Shine Juice, which is boiled linseed oil, DNA and, uh, or denatured alcohol and shellac, three parts, equal parts of it. It's like a little shine juice. Um, of, I use this down at the museum all the time and everything I'm turning down there just to put a little shine on it before I uh, hand it out. Boiled linseed oil, denatured alcohol, and shellac. You can build a shine with this if you have the patience. Just keep adding more and more. A little bit like a friction polish, yeah. Try not to get it too much on these outside edges because this is going to be my glue surfaces when I swing this around. So I, I don't want to get too much of my uh, of my uh, shellac up in that area where it's not going to uh, glue well anymore. Now at this point we just break it apart. Nope, we don't break it apart. Hang on. Before you break it apart, you're going to want to mark the corners of this. Um, I do it, uh, I just mark the outside edge here. One, I go counterclockwise, or clockwise. One, two, three. 
So now when I turn this around, the numbers will all be on the inside corners. One, two, three, four. And then I'll know I have it exactly opposite. See, now you can see where I put the glue. I just did a couple drops on the top corners there. And this split a little bit, but that's the outside now, so that doesn't matter. would do is take these get my one on the inside my two on the inside my three and my four I take these and glue these back together and you can kind of see the bell shape in there on the outside if you look on the inside you can kind of see what the bell is going to look like too because you got the, the shape of it there. So. Um, so on these, I glued these back together as I used uh, the melamine because it dries pretty clear and pretty fast. So, but I glue it in there. I don't want to get glue down into this area, so kind of I do it really thin on all the surfaces, try to keep it away from the joints. And I almost dry out before I get to the edge of there. Glue it all together, and it looks like that when you get done. So you've got, got it glued together, your four corners are matched up. Um, this one I've already turned a tenon on. I can pass these around the room. You guys want to put them together and see what, they're, what it's going to look like. So, but at that point, you can see what it's going to look like. You can see your inside. Um, so then, now, now we've got to turn the outside. Um, it's tight bond melan melanine melanine melamine melamine wood groove. Yeah, yeah, it's fast drying and it dries really clear. Yeah, it's a music video. Yeah, and the, uh, the chuck that you're looking at there, I use this chuck in particular because it doesn't force in uh, the crosshairs to break it back apart when I used it originally. So I like to use this one for this work. I hate this for everything else. <laughs> I don't think it holds. So. I, I used a, you know, a regular spur for all my other work, but in this case, I didn't want the spur to get in there and drive it apart. I actually put a little eighth inch hole in both the ends here so that my, my uh, points going in don't actually pry the wood back apart. Of course, this is dried and all that. I shouldn't have a problem with this now. Now watch it come apart. Okay, so now I'm going to cut my, my bell shape again on the outside of this. So I have a bell-shaped ornament with a bell-shaped hole. Of course, my bell-shaped hole didn't, looks more like a Hershey's Chocolate Kiss, so I probably should call it a Hershey's Chocolate Kiss ornament. So, but I've seen other guys do this with, uh, on the Internet. A guy did it with a Christmas tree, cut a Christmas tree thing, and it came out perfectly. Um, I did a test one that with the Christmas tree, and it came out looking like a star or something, so I... I, I went with, I did a couple practice runs. I went with the bell. My practice run with the bell came out better than my practice run with the Christmas tree. So, pardon me? Yeah.
See now with this spinning, you can see how thin this outside wall is already. I don't got a lot to work with there. So I'm at the, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll get that round before it uh, hits that edge. It's gonna be pretty thin. Okay, I made it round. So now I'm gonna try and pick up my bell shape again here. I think my top of my bell is gonna be about right. So that'll be my top of my bell, my or the bottom of my bell, I mean. My top is gonna be way up here somewhere. I like to give myself some lines to stay in between here. And put a little dong on the bottom or clanger. Put a little clanger on the bottom of this thing here. And make sure I don't go through the bottom because I kind of angled that one in a little bit too. So. Did that on purpose to show you that all of us have catches.
hard to get that to a point because there's glue there. It's where I glued the four corners together. So. Now some people will take this and when they're done they'll drill a hole in the top, run a string through there and hang a little jingle bell inside. That's how uh, the video I got this from online was. Um, some people add a, a little finial on top there with a string through it to hook it up. Or um, There's several ways to finish this. I'm just going to cut this off here after I get that down a little bit. little shine juice on here.
Oops. A little rag would have worked better. <laughs> It's a top. <laughs> it got too close to the glue on it, so. So there, at this point, you can drill a little hole and put a little white hoop in there, but it's a, it's a little Christmas ornament. So it's so one of the options you can do for our challenge next month. Um, once again, with the challenge, everybody who brings an ornament in for the challenge will go into a raffle for one of the woodcraft coupons and then we'll have uh, coupons for first and second place so there you go inside out ornament if you've only seen our videos then you've only seen the smallest fraction of what the geek group is it's a place where you can craft improve on manufacture repair rediscover test discuss, research, and share just about any project in a one-of-a-kind massive facility with tools and equipment you might otherwise never get the chance to touch, let alone use for your own projects. The Geek Group is a learning institution. We're people with different skills, backgrounds, and perspectives, figuring out how to make ideas a reality and sharing those insights with everyone. To help you along the way and to get help from you are tens of thousands of members from around the world connected to the lab in real time through internet relay chat and live streaming video. A single-minded appetite for knowledge and a drive to create are traits common to all geeks. We found a way to amplify those traits, a way to give you the resources you need to improve lives. Get involved at thegeekgroup.org. We thank the Future Girl Foundation for the grant that made these videos possible. GIMS and the thousands upon thousands of purchases and private donations from members and viewers like you that keep this place running. Thank you.